Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about uh, how to graph uh, hyperbolas and then also how to write equations of hyperbolas. Now, we had a separate session which you can get on YouTube. It just goes through the basics of hyperbolas and we're going to rip through that section just to give you some refresher before we talk about graphing uh, hyperbolas and writing equations for hyperbolas. All right, so just uh, as a refresher, hyperbola is a set of all points such that the, di uh, the difference of the distances between all points in the foci is constant. So if I say d1, here's d1 to this point, and then d2, if I subtract d2 from d1, I get some value x. And it really should be the absolute value of uh, d1 and d2, the difference between the two, is gonna be some constant value. So d1 minus d2 here, is gonna give us an absolute value, and that absolute value is gonna represent this constant value. So again, the hyperbola is a set of all points such that the difference of the distances between all points and the foci, here's foci one and foci two, or focus one and focus two, is going to be constant. Now remember that an ellipse is different in that an ellipse is a set of all points uh, such that the sum of the distances from the foci to the ellipse is going to be constant. And with a hyperbola, it's the difference. All right, so that's the definition. Now, uh, with a hyperbola, we have two branches. Uh, we have a transverse axis. The transverse axis can be vertical or horizontal. We still have vertices. Vertices are the tips of the branches. And we still have uh, foci. The two foci, in this case, are going to be inside of the branches. Right, the vertices are the tips of the branches, and they're going to be A units from the center. So always when you're figuring out what, and we'll, we're going to need to use this formula, we need to figure out uh, what the center is. We can determine that as the midpoint of uh, the two vertices, or also the two foci. And again, vertices are A units from the center. All right, so the center is a midpoint between the vertices. And the foci are going to lie inside of each of the branches, and there are now C units from the center. Now, when we had uh, an ellipse, we used this formula. It was called c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, where c was the distance from the center uh, to the foci, a was the distance from the center to the vertices, and b was the distance from the center to the covertices. Now, we can use a similar formula when we write equations and graph hyperbolas, but now the formula is going to be c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So ellipse, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. And with a hyperbola, it's going to be c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where b now just helps us define what our asymptotes are. There are no covertices in a hyperbola. a value, again, distance between the center and the vertices, and the c value, distance between the center along the transverse axis and the foci. Right, so the asymptotes are two branches uh, help define the two branches of the hyperbola. Those are the lines that the uh, branches get closer and closer to, but never touch. So they're different than a tangent. A tangent touches um, a uh, graph in one point only, and an asymptote never touches the graph, but it gets closer and closer to that graph. All right, so here is just a review of some of the components of hyperbola. Remember, the asymptotes are going to be our framework by which we create or graph the hyperbolas. And really what we need are the two vertices and then the two asymptotes. We need to know, of course, what the transverse axis is. And then we can graph or give a rough uh, sketch of our hyperbola. All right, so let's talk about equations of hyperbolas. <clears throat> uh, we have two equations, one where the hyperbola is, uh, has a horizontal transverse axis. And you can see the transverse axis here is horizontal. It goes right through the center, the vertices, and the foci. And in that case, my formula, or the, uh, uh, the formula, I guess the format for the equation is x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1, where the center of the hyperbola is located at hk. My a value still remains the distance between the center and the vertices. b value helps me define my asymptotes. Now, in terms of identifying where the a value goes, with the ellipse, we said that the ellipse uh, has an a squared value that was always bigger than the b squared value. And that's how you could tell where the a squared uh, value went, whether it went under the x minus h squared, uh, 
uh, numerator or the y minus k squared numerator. But in this case, for a hyperbola, what we want to look at is the positive term. And the a squared value always goes with the positive term. b squared value is going to go with the negative term that's associated with y minus k in this case, with a transverse axis that's horizontal. If I have a transverse axis that's vertical, so again, transverse axis always goes through the vertices of the hyperbola, the branches of the hyperbola, then my equation of the formula is y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared is equal to 1. All right, so there are, those are our two formulas that we need to remember as we graph and write equations of hyperbolas. So let's uh, get started. Again, this is just review. Uh, a being the distance from the center along the vertices, or along the transverse axis to the vertices. C, uh, the distance from the center in both directions along the transverse axis to the foci. B helps us determine our uh, asymptotes, and of course there are two of them. The two other things you need to remember um, are the slopes of the asymptotes. When I have a horizontal transverse axis, I have the slope is equal to plus or minus b over a. And I always know that the transverse axis goes through the center. So we can use our point slope formula in order to figure out what the equation is of the line of the, trans, or of the uh, asymptote uh, by identifying the point, which is the center, and the slope, which in this case for a horizontal transverse axis is plus or minus b over a. And with a vertical transverse axis, it's going to be plus or minus a over b. So remember, uh, different equations for the slope of the asymptotes based on the orientation of the transverse axis. Again, a horizontal gives us plus or minus b over a for the slope, and the vertical gives us plus or minus a over b for the slope. All right, so let's talk about uh, the steps for graphing a hyperbola. So if we're given an equation for a hyperbola, how do we go about graphing it? So step Number one is to determine the orientation of the hyperbola on the transverse axis. If the equation is y squared minus x squared, then the transverse axis is vertical. If it's x squared minus y squared, then the transverse axis is horizontal. So we're going to identify, we're going to use this particular equation to understand uh, how to graph a hyperbola. And we take a look at this particular equation and we notice that it's x squared minus y squared. So I know that the transverse axis is going to be horizontal. And the next step is for us to identify the hk values. And the hk values in this case are 3 and 2. So I know that uh, 3, 2 is going to be the center of the hyperbola. So let's go ahead and graph that. And it's going to look something like this. So I have my transverse axis runs right through the center. I know it's a horizontal transverse axis. So TA stands for a transverse axis. My center is at 3, 2. So I've gone through the first two steps in graphing a hyperbola. Next step is to identify the coordinates of the vertices and plot them. The vertices are going to be a units along the transverse axis uh, away from the center uh, in both directions. And so I identify my a value as the value underneath the positive term. In this case, it's underneath the x minus 3 squared term. Uh, I know that my uh, a units are going to be 7. So I'm going to graph off uh, or mark off 7 units plus or minus from the center along the transverse axis. And then the fourth step, and we'll go ahead and show the graph in just a second, is to calculate the equations for the asymptotes and draw them. And there are really two ways we can do this. We can uh, calculate the uh, equations for the asymptotes, or I'll show you a second way um, after I go through step number four. All right, so again, remember, we're going to use a point slope formula to calculate the equations for the asymptotes. We know that the asymptotes go through the center. We've identified the center at 3, 2. We recall from uh, the graph or the slide that I showed to you on the slope for a given hyperbola that in this case, the slope is going to be uh, equal to plus or minus b over a. That's for a horizontal transverse axis. Uh, so in this case, I have plus or minus, here's my b value of 4 over 7. So slope is equal to plus or minus 4 over 7. And now I have enough in, uh, in order to create two equations for the asymptotes. The first one is going to be y minus or y1, which in this case is just 2, is equal to the slope. And we're going to say plus or minus, because we have two equations, uh, 4 over 7 times x minus 
x1, which in this case is 7. So eventually we want to rewrite this in slope intercept form, but for now this is good. y minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 4 sevenths x minus 7. And those are the two equations that we can use to identify the asymptotes, uh, which define the structure of the and the shape of the hyperbola. All right, so let's go ahead and mark off the asymptotes and also the vertices. So remember the vertices were seven units, so seven units, the A value, from the center along the transverse axis. So I mark off seven units to the left and seven units to the right, and I have my two vertices. And then the asymptote is going to be the equation that I identified and I graphed that. The other way to identify the asymptote really is because the slope is four sevenths and because the asymptotes go through uh, the center, I can just march off seven units to the right and four units up, and I have my uh, a one point for an asymptote, seven units to the right and four units down. I have a second point, uh, seven units to the left and four units up. I have a third point, seven units uh, to the left and four units down. And I have my last point, and I just draw the lines through the center and the respective two points, and there is my asymptote. All right, so I've graphed the center, the vertices, and the asymptote. I have enough really to create a structure uh, which uh, roughly represents the hyperbola, but I'm also going to find the focus or the foci of the hyperbola uh, before we finally graph. So step number five is to identify the coordinates for the foci and plot them. We're going to use the equation for c for hyperbolas to identify the value of c. In this case, it's c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And then uh, that c value is going to be the distance uh, along the transverse axis into each branch uh, from the center. So let's figure out what that is. So in c squared, we don't know. We're trying to find out what that value is. Is equal to a squared, which is going to be 7 squared or 49, uh, plus b squared, which is 16, which gives us c squared is equal to 65. Uh, and c is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 65, or let's just say 8.1. All right. So I have my c value. It's 8.1. I'm going to go back to the graph. And I'm going to identify the foci. And I'm going to move 8.1 units approximately to the right along the transverse axis and 8.1 units to the left along the transverse axis. And I end up with two foci, one at about 11, 2. And this one is about at negative 5, 2. Remember, the foci are on the transverse axis. Uh, so now I have identified my center, my vertices, my foci, my asymptote, transverse axis. I'm ready to draw at least one of the branches, uh, and I go ahead and do that. Uh, the other branch would fit right on the other right-hand side. It would be symmetrical to the one on the left, but I got a lot of stuff going on, on this right-hand side. So I'm just going to leave it blank for now, and you can imagine the other branch and how it looks. All right, so uh, we're going to bypass any additional examples, and we're going to go right to the process of uh, writing uh, equations for hyperbolas. And... Uh, so we went from having an equation and drawing a graph, right? And now we are going to go from having uh, a graph, really, and writing an equation. So let's talk about writing equations of hyperbolas. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this graph to identify uh, the equation for a given hyperbola. So let's go through the steps. Step number one is going to be identify the orientation of the hyperbola, the transverse axis. And in this case, we can see that the transverse axis is going to be vertical. Again, it goes right through the center and the vertices. So I'm going to write down vertical transverse axis. And then we're going to define the formula based on whether or not it's vertical or tra uh, horizontal transverse axis. So my vertical uh, transverse axis formula is going to be y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared is equal to 1. All right, so let's start filling out some of the values here. The h and k value is the first for us to fill out. So we're going to identify the coordinates for the center. These are the h, k values. So I see my center is at negative 3, 2. So I'm going to write this in here, negative 3, 2. And then I'm going to go back into my, uh, my formula that I wrote out here, and I'm going to fill them in with the appropriate values. So I have minus 3 and 2, so it's going to be y minus 2 and x plus 3. 
right? So I've filled in part of the equation. Now I have to get the a squared and the b squared values, the a and b values. So how do I go about doing that? Well, uh, first is I'm going to determine the a value. And it really depends on what you're given. Sometimes you're going to be given the foci in the vertices. Sometimes you're going to be given a b value in the vertices. Sometimes you're going to be given uh, the b value and the foci. Uh, you're going to be given at least two of the values, and then you're going to have to figure out the third. So in this case, we're given uh, the foci and the vertices. And so we can find or use that information uh, then to find the b value. So the a value is going to be the distance between the center and the vertices. And I can just uh, count off the distance here. I have negative 3, 2 as the center, negative 3, 0 as one of the vertices. So the distance is going to be 2. So I just move two units. Uh, along the transverse axis uh, towards the vertices, and it's going to be 2 in both directions. Uh, but I'm going to say 2 is my value for A. And the, the values for A and B are going to be positive. Generally speaking, um, as we discuss hyperbolas, and you can just consider them as two units in either direction on the transverse axis uh, from the center to the vertices. C value, distance from the center to the foci or a focus, negative 3, 2 to negative 3, 6. The distance from this point to this is 4. Negative 3, uh, the x component stays the same. The difference is the y component. 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. My c value is equal to 4. Right, so now I can use my equation for uh, hyperbolas to determine what the b value is going to be. And that formula is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared gives us our c value we recall as being equal to 4, and a being equal to 2. So I have 4 squared is equal to uh, 2 squared plus b squared. 4 squared is 16. 2 squared is 4. That leaves us b squared value is equal to 12. So uh, now I can write my equation for the hyperbola. So I go back to the uh, values that I'm filling out here. I recall that uh, a squared or a is 2, so the value for a squared is going to be 4. So I write in here uh, 4. And then we recall that our b squared value is going to be 12. So I write in 12 here. And finally, I have my formula for my hyperbola. y minus 2 squared over 4 minus x plus 3 squared over 12 is equal to 1. And you can see here, a squared value in this case is going to be less than the b squared value, which is fine. Uh, in, in ellipse, remember that the a squared value will always be greater than the b squared value. All right, so just reviewing some of the things that we went over and the steps of finding uh, the equation. And finally, writing the equation, which we did. And that's it. All right, here's another example for you. If you want some challenge practice, you can try this one out. I'm not going to give you the answer um, right now. You can come to class and get it from me later. All right, that's it, uh, that, that's it for this edition of Ott and Math. Thanks for joining and talking about hyperbolas. Uh, come and join us for any of the other conic sections on ellipses, circles, and parabolas on any other edition on YouTube on Ott and Math.